Now, if you fancy a new smartphone with crazy, ridiculous specs for an insanely low price, well, you really can't go wrong with the Poco. The Poco X3 NFC, which I fully reviewed right here on Techspert, is still one of my favorite budget smartphones of 2020, costing just under 200 quid here in the UK. But if you can't even stretch up that far, well, your next best bet might be the fresh new Poco M3. This is the cheapest phone released by the brand thus far, costing you from just 149 euros, but it still serves up some really unexpected specs like a full HD plus display, you've got a Snapdragon 662 chipset, a 48 megapixel primary camera, and a 6,000 milliamp battery. Well, suck me through a hosepipe, that is nuts. So now it's time to whip the Poco M3 out of its lovely yellow box, get it all set up, take you on a full on tour of that hardware and the software ahead of my in-depth review. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Okay, let's see what you get with this beast. It's got the phone itself, of course, which is exceptionally cold after its trip over uh, from good old Hong Kong. It's got a power adapter, in this case a two-pin European affair. Got your Type-C USB cable. We've even got some very snazzy wristbands bundled in there as well. Gnarly, dude. And then bundled inside the little bonus yellow box, you know what I'm hoping for. And yes, there it is, my friends, a condom case to keep your Poco M3 in perfect nick. So that's the box. Let's actually check out the exciting part of it all, which is is the Poco M3. Now the M3 is certainly a sizable wee beast at 6.53 inches but you know no bigger than most other smartphones in 2020. As you'd expect for a simple budget smartphone it is of course just a plastic backend but it's actually textured as you can hopefully see there. It's got an almost leather style uh, sort of finish to it which is quite funky. It should hopefully aid with grip and also prevent uh, fingerprints and greasy marks from coating that surface too easily. And you'll be able to pick up the Poco M3 in either a black finish finish, a blue finish, or a bright, vibrant yellow instead, kind of similar to the old Poco box. And personally, I wouldn't have minded that bright yellow one, actually. I think it's got a bit more character to it than just the bog standard black. Uh, and of course, a lot has been made of the uh, bit of Poco branding up there at the top on the uh, rather enormous camera chassis. I don't mind the actual camera chassis itself. I think that sort of helps it to stand out a little bit. And when you see the Poco M3, you'll see that camera chassis doesn't actually jut that far from the surface of the phone, though it isn't obviously completely even. But it certainly won't be a problem if you've got the Poco M3 lying flat on the surface and you're trying to use it like so. And here's hoping that plastic backing uh, won't get scratched up too easily, but only time will tell on that front. As for the display, it's coated in Gorilla Glass 3, so hopefully that should prove relatively scratch resistant and you should actually have a pre-installed screen protector on here as well. The reason mine doesn't is because it was an early unit shipped uh, ahead of time. And you've got your edge mounted power button there as well with built in fingerprints and so let's just see if we've actually got any juice in the tank. Hopefully should be good to go. Yep. So there we go. So we'll get the Poco M3 all set up and take you on a full on tour of the rest of it. Oh and it's good news as far as the SIM tray is concerned by the way because not only do you have a dual SIM set up here but you've also got space for a micro SD memory card as well up to 512 gigs supported to expand the 64 or 128 gigs of onboard storage depending on which model you grab. Okay, Poco M3 all set up and ready for business. And what you've got on here is Android 10, so it's unfortunately not Android 11, the fresh new uh, OS, but hopefully that update won't be too far away. But what you do get slapped on top of that is MIUI 12, that's Xiaomi's own launcher, but it is MIUI 12 for Poco, so there are some subtle differences here and there. You do still get that fantastic control center, uh, which was introduced in MIUI 12, uh, such as gives you fast access to all of your main sort of settings and toggles, kind of similar to the iOS version. You do, thank God, have a built-in app tray as usual with Poco smartphones. You can bury away all that stuff. You do get a fair bit of crapware pre-installed on here as well. Um, so a lot of like the Xiaomi first party apps and then random stuff like TikTok and LinkedIn, which you might not necessarily want. But at least quite a lot of that stuff, if you don't want it, you can simply uninstall it, which is definitely good. And despite the budget asking price, you actually get quite a decent little set of features on here, like dual band Wi-Fi support, although you don't seem to get NFC. And indeed, no, no NFC in the uh, connections setup uh, section. So yes, yeah, so it looks like if you want contactless payments, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. Of course, at the same time that it launched the M3, Poco did announce that it was splitting away from Xiaomi and becoming its own independent body. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the software on Poco smartphones going forward, especially the likes of the Poco M3, which come with, of course, Xiaomi's MIUI launchers slathered on top. Now let's check out that gorgeous display. And as I mentioned before, it's a 6.5 53 inch here on the Poco M3. It's an IPS panel, which is standard at this budget price point. And the bezels aren't too chunky, again, for a cheapy smartphone. You've got that little nipple notch poking its way into your view when you are streaming a bit of video action, but it's nothing too obnoxious. 
The main thing is that the visuals are rather, rather tasty indeed, again, at this budget price point. It's a full HD plus resolution, which is very hard to come by. A lot of the Motorola's around this price point, they are HD instead, 720p instead of 1080. So you get nice crisp detail in there and fairly punchy colors for an IPS panel as well. You can actually dive into those display settings if you like and have a bit of a play around with the colors. It doesn't make a massive amount of difference. You can go for saturated or standard, uh, just slight difference on basically the general vibrancy. And you can also play around with the color temperature if you like. And in further great news, the Poco M3 is fully Widevine L1 certified. So that means in the likes of Netflix, you'll be able to enjoy HD quality content, not crappy SD. And as if the visuals weren't already special enough here on the Poco M3, you've also got a stereo speaker setup as well. Um, so let's just boost up that audio, see if it's actually any good. HD plus screen, stereo speakers, that same Snapdragon 662 chipset as the Moto G9 Power and Play. So yeah, unsurprisingly, like a lot of budget smartphones with a stereo speaker setup, that earpiece speaker, definitely a lot more tinny and quiet compared with the bottom mounted speaker, but it's still nice to have that sort of stereo-ish option. And the rest of the audio chops on this thing, really impressive impressive too. You've got a headphone jack up top so you can actually get a uh, wired pair of headphones on the go, otherwise Bluetooth 5.0 support. You've also got support for high-res audio playback on this thing. So overall, proper media beast. So now let's have a gander at the performance and the Poco M3 actually sports the same Snapdragon 662 chipset as you'll find in the Moto G9 Power and G9 Play, backed here by 4 gigs of RAM. And then my benchmarking tests, as you'll see there, perform very similar to those phones, slightly better in the single core, slightly worse in the multi-core score. What does that mean for the everyday performance? Well, I'm 100% expecting to see a few little stutters and stammers as you're sort of getting around doing everyday shenanigans. Amp should hopefully load without too much of a grumble and hopefully Touchwood you'll be able to do uh, a good bit of gaming as well with the likes of Call of Duty and PUBG. The good news for gamers though is that you do get that MIUI Game Turbo feature slapped on here as well so that can just help to uh, streamline the performance just by dedicating resources to your game make sure there aren't any nasty little background uh, resource hogs basically taking up all that valuable memory and all that good stuff. You can also block notifications and do all kinds of other clever stuff. So Call of Duty set to medium uh, graphics quality and frame rate by default but you know what let's try putting it through a little bit of pain. It does have the Adreno 610 GPU in there after all, so let's see if it can handle uh, things when it gets a bit hot. Nobody wants to play with me. Okay, let's do this thing. So, so far, touch wood seems nice and smooth. Oh, the guy just completely ignored me, thank God. And yeah, you know what? Nice and smooth so far. No jutters or anything like that. I'm actually killing people, so that's always a bonus. And the touch response and everything seems absolutely fine for a budget smartphone as well, which is good. Either these guys really suck or I'm actually doing all right. Yeah. So yeah, very, very impressed uh, by just a quick game of Call on Duty there. Played with an absolutely fine frame rate. Uh, touch response will say everything absolutely fine as well. Great for a budget smartphone. So you know what? That'll do the job. But of course, I'll be playing plenty more Call of Duty uh, ahead of my in-depth Poco M3 review. So check back for that in case there's any little quirks or other issues. And then of course, hot damn, you've got that 6,000 milliamp battery as well, which is bigger than, I mean, a lot of budget smartphones these days, they come with a 5,000 milliamp cell stuffed inside, which is, you know, big enough generally to get a day and a half two days of use per charge 6000 milliamps that should hopefully see you through two full days no worries got the usual battery saver mode shenanigans like you're gonna need that so yeah the only other budget smartphone rocking a 6000 milliamp battery that's come out recently is the moto g9 power so obviously a match for that you do have 18 watt fast charging on here as well which is pretty damn good again for a budget blower so let's finish up by taking a proper look at that triple lens rear camera tech and what you got here is a 48 megapixel primary sensor backed by simple 2 megapixel macro and depth efforts and normally at this sort of budget price point you get a very basic snapper that'll do the job fine for simple shareable shots and not much else but to be honest i've been so impressed by everything else on the poco m3 i wouldn't be surprised if this camera is actually really solid as you can see there you've got full hdr smarts you've also got an ai mode which is kind of like basic scene recognition i tend to leave that switched off to be honest and i'm expecting that yes indeed uh, the default auto mode will shoot photos at 12 megapixels rather than the full 48 you'll get a bit of pixel bit and just that'll brighten up shots and make them a bit more balanced uh, but if you want a full 48 megapixel resolution shot you'll have to dive into the bonus camera modes and there you go just if you want a bit of finer detail in there only uh, if the lighting conditions are good of course everybody say hello to veronica by the way i've been very rude and not introduced you uh yeah her face has uh, seen better days but uh, you know she still does the job as my photography subject you got full on portrait mode of course using that depth sensor just to add a nice uh, bokeh style background effect 
You can also choose how strong that effect is as well, the level of blur in the background. And you've got a selection of other bonus camera modes that you can jump on board with as well, including a bit of night mode as well. So that'll just take several different shots and different exposures. Got to keep the phone pretty steady while you're doing that. And then it'll mash them all together and hopefully you'll get a nice bright result. Ah, forgot about that effing watermark as usual. But yeah, as you can see there, reasonable amounts of detail, quite natural looking tones and everything as well, considering the ambient conditions in here and if you know what you're up to as well uh you know your way around a dslr and the likes of that you've also got a full-on pro mode as well where you can basically play around with the likes of the iso levels the white balance the shutter speed all that good stuff you could also shoot at the full 48 megapixel resolution if you like and then if you drag down this little settings bar as well as you can see there you can shoot in raw format as well and uh, you've got all kinds of other bonus options as for your video well you can't shoot at 4k resolution sadly you do top off at 1080p at 30 frames per second but hopefully it should be fine for your everyday home movies and all of that good stuff and then if we uh, go back to photo and dive around to the front you've got a single selfie snapper it's only an 8 megapixel effort so again pretty basic but hopefully it should be fine for your everyday uh, sort of selfie instagram shots or what have you oh yeah sex on a stick so that right there, in a nutshell, is the Poco M3, the first M-series entry-level smartphone from the Poco brand. And so far, I've got to say, it looks like an absolute stonker. If you're into your, your media streaming when you're on the move, be it video, music, whatever, if you want to do a bit of gaming on the go, all that kind of good stuff, and you've only got 150 quid in your back pocket, well, you know what? It seems like this is a more than worthy choice. Of course, there are a couple of key features lacking. You don't get a 90Hz display, you don't get NFC, but again, for 150 quid, like, that would be blow your own brains out incredible if it did. Uh, you can always upgrade to the Poco X3 if you want that kind of jazz. So stay tuned for my full Poco M3 review and if you're an impatient bugger then you can actually order one right now from the likes of AliExpress online from 149 euros. Be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.